Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. Uh, today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what CNBC has in regards to the update on the markets like the S&P, NASDAQ. We're going to be taking a look at the crypto market and Jerome Powell saying that, uh, you know, the likelihood of a 50 basis point uh, interest rate hike uh, possible for May, which is causing a lot of uncertainty and turmoil within the markets. Going to be taking a look at the negative news in regards of what's going on from Johnny Deaton in regards of uh, the Ripple vs. SC case. And we're going to be taking a look at a couple different threads in that, in that regard. So we're just going to quickly get into it real quick. So coming over here to uh, Coin CoinGecko, we're currently sitting at a 1.95, currently down 3.2% for this. So obviously there's uh, a little bit of market uncertainty going on right now. We got a little bit of red coming down. Bitcoin's under 40000 again. Ethereum's under 3000 XRP is at 72 almost 73 cents. So not down as much. Uh, see if we have any gainers, uh, whatever that curve Dow token, uh, 14%, loop ring, 5.3. So not that big of a gainers. Uh, coming over here to the Bitcoin Fear Greed Index, we're currently sitting at a 26. So we're down a point from yesterday. And when this updates in two hours and 59 minutes, I think it's definitely going to be lower because there's a lot of uncertainty. Coming over here, the NASDAQ is down 2.55%. S&P 500 down 2.77%. If we come over here to crypto, uh, Obviously, you can see we're down 2.33%, for almost 4.2% uh, for Bitcoin, XRP down 0.02%. Uh, so uh, this has kind of been the talk of the town in regards of, you know, who's you know who's really driving this negative narrative and these down uh, prices in our markets. And uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed have uh, a lot to do with it in regard of, you know, what's going on. So there's a lot of uh, traders and investors out there that are, you know, selling off stuff based off of this uh, 50 basis point hike possible for May. So who knows uh, what exactly is going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case and we did get that announcement in May, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. And at this point, you would think it'd be priced in. So it says this can mean an interest rate hike of 50 basis points in May as price rises at their uh, fastest pace in more than 40 years. It's absolutely essential to restore price stability from Jerome Powell. So we'll see come come May, but that's uh, causing you know turmoils within the market, and obviously there's other things going on as well. But jumping into uh, the topic of a discussion for us Ripple and XRP investors, this is going to be one of the videos that kind of focuses on that. Um, right here it says worse than expected. All final briefs due December 20, 2022, absent a settlement. End of March 2023 for a decision is now best case. So James K. Fallon had updated us and says parties filed joint scheduling letter proposing. Opening briefs for some rejudgment and expert challenges in August and closing briefs a few days before Christmas. <laughs> so, I mean, even for me, you know, I'm, I'm pretty I'm a pretty strong holder, been uh, uh, buying and accumulating since uh, late 2017, early 2018 and just been holding on, you know, and accumulating ever since. So to see to hear this is it's truly a dagger. I mean, it truly seems like, you know, the SC is going to do everything in their power to continue to delay. And uh, it's almost getting to the point to where it's like, OK, you know. At what point is uh, is it almost like a coordinated effort to you know to push this thing on? I don't know if that's necessarily in uh, you know Ripple's uh, best interest, but I, you know it's just kind of weird how things just keep dragging on, dragging on. Especially them kind of agreeing to this timeline, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Johnny Dean continues to says a settlement prior to a ruling comes down to the emails and co comments with edits in the 68 drafts from the Hemant speech and whether the SEC will be forced to turn them over. So I truly hope that, uh, it, you know, after they come with their, um, I guess the SC had a time period where they had an extension to, um, in a sense, uh, object to the uh, judge's ruling of them having to provide the 68 drafts and the comments according to the Hinman speech. So once that goes through and then she, uh, you know, she evaluates what's going on and she kind of... Um, agrees with uh, the other judge in regards of the SC needing to provide these documents to Ripple. Once it happens and they're forced to turn them over, I think at that point, I truly agree with them. You know, we possibly could see a settlement. I doubt they're going to want, you know, Ripple and, you know, others to see what's going on in, in those documents and those drafts. But, you know, if this does get drug on more and they aren't forced to provide them and turn them over, I mean, we could be looking at, you know, this, you know, this long time frame, which will be absolutely terrible. I mean, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be absolutely terrible. It's just more, more and more time, more suppression for a lot of us that's been investing heavily into uh, you know whether it's Ripple, you know whether you use a link to or whatever the case is, or you know uh, you have uh, XRP as a digital asset in the market. So continuing on here, 
Johnny Deaton's responding to JV says, so if the SEC already analyzed XRP under Howie, how are we here today? Uh, Johnny Deaton says, Jay asked a billion dollar question. The June 13, 2018 XRP memo did not recommend enforcement. That means one of three things. One, the SEC lawyers concluded it was similar to ETH, a security early on, but not today. Two, they can't satisfy the Howey test. Or three, it's inc inconclusive. So coming down here, it says, if the report concluded present day XRP was clearly a security, it would have recommended enforcement action, and the SEC wouldn't have waited two and a half more years to bring it on. If it, if it concluded XRP was a security, the SEC would have told Bragg on House and turned it over. Conflicts. Hashtag conflicts. I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's it's quite evident that, that that's you know what we've been dealing with. It's just shady, shady behavior from people that are supposed to be protecting us. Coming over here, uh, this is Johnny Dean. From, this is his crypto law says, uh, quote, the SEC is trying to duck accountability and delay judicial review of its failure to comply with the Freedom of Information Act by hiding behind the confidentiality interests of the law firm with whom it owns ethic officials said its employee had a conflict. So obviously Jason Foster and Empower Oversight are, you know, seeking for Freedom of Information Act, you know, they're suing the SEC for uh, certain documents. They have a list of names that we've been bringing up. I'm going to see, maybe I should bring up the names real quick. Hopefully I don't lose it. Maybe I'll find it later. But yeah, there's a list of names that the community has been kind of searching and, and trying to surface information and in, whether it's documents or audio or video footage of people on this list like Joe Lubin and them to kind of, you know, piece together and strengthen the Ethereum free pass timeline in the ETH gate scandal that we've all been talking about. Johnny Deaton response says the SC is supposed to fight for justice. Instead, it is now officially obstructing justice. Quote, it claims that the law firm's potentially confidential records are the only remaining records to be released. Also shows a disturbing lack of good faith. <clears throat> well, where's the rest of it? Why is it only showing? Interesting. So continuing on here, uh, I wanted to go over Johnny Dean's thread here. It says, uh, this is a thread of more evidence showing that SC lawsuit versus Ripple was a weapon because there's simply no other logical or legal explanation. It says, in 2015, Finson and the DOJ settlement with the Ripple, according to the settlement, Ripple had to register with Finson, not the SEC. It says, everyone knows that the party already excuse me, everyone knows that part already, but what I did, what I did not realize until, uh, says Tiger Mike 15 pointed out to me, was Ripple was still providing both Fenson and the DOJ independent audit reports of XRP sales until 2020, the same year it was sued by the SEC. You can read for yourself that Ripple was subject to an external audit requirement clause as part of the 2015 settlement wherein Fenson declared XRP convertible virtual currency. Ripple had to hire an independent auditor that the DOJ and the Finson did not object to. So you can kind of come in and take a look at that. He continues, just says, the auditor was required to provide three independent reports during a five-year period, one in 2016, 2018, and 2020. Each report must contain a minimum of six months of transactions. These reports of XRP sales went directly to Finson and the DOJ. Think about that for a minute. Yeah, think about it. And uh, if transactions were suspicious or nefarious or illegal in any way, wouldn't a regulator re or regula regulator report that activity? Wouldn't would government regulators allow the open and continuous sale of unregistered securities for five years? Maybe you think it was because the agencies don't share info. In 2006, Finson and the SEC announced a collaboration and information sharing agreement between the agencies. So you can come here and take a look at that press point there. In addition to that. Uh, looking down, it says, it's a joint statement dated October 11, 2019 between Finson, the CFTC, and the SEC related to digital assets and banking secrecy laws. Clayton was chairman of the SEC at the time, so you can come in and take a look at that as well. The bottom line is that the Ripple settlement in 2015 was the first time the U.S. government regulated a cryptocurrency. The U.S. government looked at XRP and classified it as a virtual currency, not a security. Ripple was forced to comply with banking laws, not securities laws. Afterwards, an independent auditor approved by the DOJ provided extensive reporting of XRP sales directly to Finson and DOJ. All was good. On June 13, 2018, SEC lawyers analyzed whether XRP was a security under Howey. In the end, they did not recommend enforcement. Yet, walking out the door of the SEC, Clayton Hemant and Berger pushed for a lawsuit. Why? And then he uh, references back to this other thread he has. And it's just like, uh, these are the facts and they are not in dispute. So, I mean, obviously for us that's been following this this Ripple versus SC case and, you know, being investors in, in Ripple or, or XRP and just been in this world, we, we all know this stuff, especially looking at the stuff that we've been surfacing as a community. So, I mean, it's just, it's just sickening on top of, you know, you know, seeing this, it's just like, 
you know, how much more can, you know, the, can the community actually take? You know, obviously there's going to be some people that sell off out of fear or frustration, whatever the case. And then, you know, they may be individuals that may miss out. And, you know, I don't, I don't blame them for that. But then at the end of the day, you know, if we, if you truly, I, I'm just going to speak for myself, you know, as an investor in XRP, I truly believe I am on the right side of history and the right side of law in regards of my knowledge of what's going on with Ripple and XRP and, and their presence in the space. So it's like, it's just a matter of when, not if this thing takes off. So I'm just going to continue to hold on strong, continue to accumulate when I can. And uh, right here, I wanted to touch on XRP, um, is it Ma Maroon? Says, uh, like I've been saying, this thing will run all the way until the ISO 20, uh, 2200 is live. It prevents more people from getting in. Who will be able to afford? Who will be able to afford to get in if XRP is thirteen and twenty three dollars? Not very many people. If you're in, you're in. If not, you missed the opportunity. Hmm. Curious to know if there's some truth to that. You know, maybe maybe it's a part of the agenda just to push it further out that way. Um, don't want to touch on anything else here. All right, so I wanted to touch on this too. It says it's from Coin Market Cap. Legendary film director uh, Ridley Scott is going to uh, going to be involved in a brand new blockbuster that tells the story of Ethereum's launch. So my big question is, is like, okay, where's where's this gentleman getting the facts? You know, if, if in his position in in producing this production here, it's like, okay, where's he getting his facts? You know, is does is he going to have all the facts? Are they going to tell the truth and tell the full story? Are they going to utilize? You know, them in their own words, you know, them on footage, them on their audio or documents. And they're going to, you know, are they going to utilize the information from this case, information from the community in regards to the, the timeline that's not in dispute? Like, are they going to actually tell the full story of this thing? So, I mean, they're, they're saying here, quote, Ethereum's launch. I mean, this can be real nasty, you know. I'm curious to see where this thing is going to go. Hopefully they tell the truth here. Um, coming down here, what does this person say? This says Ethereum ICO. High gas fees, not scalable, not censorship resistant. JP Morgan's coins, proof of work, X. And, you know, just speaking on this, I am an Ethereum investor. I like Ethereum. I, I don't want it to fail. Obviously, we want a level playing field. We want things to be fair within the space. But it's like, okay, we want the truth. I personally would love to know the truth, especially when it comes to investing. My wife and I hard earned money. Allow me to invest properly with knowing all the facts and knowing the truth. Hopefully this thing, hopefully they do the right thing. We'll see. Uh, Johnny Deaton had uh, responded to Digital Asset Investor with this video he had posted. Let me click in here real quick. Make sure this don't get There's a, Maybe they haven't gotten answers from. So we'll play that in a second. He says, uh, May 31st, 2018, Spring 2018 Summit. Someone already knows ETH is going to get a free pass. Words mean things. Quote, consumptive use will be a term used by Bill Hammond just 14 days later. How many of these people invested in ETH based on information the public didn't have? Quite honestly, yeah. How many of them actually shorted XRP? You know, when it came to the inside knowledge, it says, side note, two of the people on stage despised Ripple and XRP and one of them went after them as a prosecutor with the DOJ. Katie Kwan went on to uh, be at or went on to be at a 16 Z. Uh, two shirts Jan's company was invested in the USV. Both of these VCs were involved in the Ethereum free pass discussions. So uh, coming over here, let's take a listen in real quick from regulators that maybe they haven't gotten answers from yet. I, I think from my perspective, one of the biggest questions I'm hearing about this year is, you know, how do we tell the difference between a security token and a utility token? And where is that dividing line? And is there a test for that? Um, do, do the networks have to be live already? Does there have to be a, a protocol that's actually you can have a consumptive use for? I think those are the questions I'm hearing. We're going to know very soon about Ethereum because I think they're meeting about it on Monday. So. <laughs> We're going to get some new information very soon. I, I wouldn't say that it's going to be very soon, but that's just, I, I don't think just because we you know there's a meeting oh, about well, it that there's not going to be white right, smoke that comes right, out of it. Right, 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 right. You know, right. <laughs> you know how, how are these people, you know, how are they a part of these these SEC discussions? Like, how are they a part of all this? Like, what gives them the 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 authority or, you know, uh, the position or right to, to be a part of that? And it's, it's just crazy. Uh, coming over here. Let me go ahead and pause this. Coming up here, uh, digital uh, Johnny Deaton says, Digital Asset Investor, or DAI, says, if this video is dated May 31st, 2018, he says a meeting with the SEC uh, ETH is set on Monday. That's June 4th, 2018. I'm looking up whether June 4th, 2018 is referenced anywhere, but June 5th is when Novogratz bets dimes to donuts. That's what he says. On June 8th is a meeting with Consensus and Lubin. So, I mean, it's a great point. Like, how many people actually knew 
you know, are these people a part of this this 60A draft speech? Are they a part of this, uh, you know, email thread that, that was going around, around at the time? You know, that, you know, Ripple's trying to gain access to in this uh, litigation. You know, how many people actually knew? You know, so how, mu- how many of them actually invested in it? Are they a part of these, you know, this secret Ethereum government society? Or are they a part of the, uh, you know, disguised wells? Uh, you know, did they heavily invest into Ethereum knowing that it was going to get a free pass? And did they short XRP knowing that XRP was going to be under the microscope of the SC when it comes to this lawsuit? So much shady stuff that's going on. And it's crazy because, you know, you got people like, you know, my family and your family out there that work their butts off at their, you know, nine to five jobs or whatever the case is, pay their taxes like good citizens do. You know, and invest a little bit of money they have left over after all their monthly expenses to invest in this space. But it's like we don't have all the facts. And there's, you know, back back door, behind the door deals that are going on that are affecting families like ours. It's absolutely sickening. And it's just a matter of time for these things uh, for before they all get exposed. And I truly hope they all get exposed for the for the wrongdoings they, that they are, because it wasn't just 15 billion dollars that affected these families. It's time, which is I feel is the most detrimental part of it. The $15 billion, that could that could be made up for sure. But look at how much time family has been affected. Since 2020, we're talking days before Christmas in 2020, how many lives were affected by that. And then all this time that these people that, you know, had the, the strength and ability to hold on based on their own life, go, uh, life goals or life finances at the time, all this time that they've been just, just dreading the, this case and the shady stuff that's been going on. And their voices aren't being heard in regards of the people that matter. You know, when it comes to, you know, the regulators, the SEC, they're just ignoring them. And even when it comes to our, uh, you know, the representative that's supposed to be for us, uh, you, you know, setting them, setting them before Congress. Like, wh- when is all that going to happen? When when does this uh, investigation take place? Is it even the talk? Are you just sending letters just to send letters to save, your fa- you know, to save face and save your own butt when it comes down to answering questions, when the thing all unfolds? Are we really going to know the truth when it comes to all this shady stuff? I mean, there's so much that could be said about it. And obviously, I just ranted on. That was a little bit of emotion that came out. But, you know, like I, like I say in all my videos, you know, I'm going to continue to stay strong. I'm going to do my best to keep my family safe uh, based on the, the the knowledge that I get and the education I get from learning in the space when it comes to investments. I'm going to do my best based on the knowledge I know. But stuff like this that we don't know, the shady stuff that's going on behind closed doors, it just sucks that we, you know, when in a sense we take the hit for it, we take the fall for it in regards of our assets and our investments going down or being worth nothing or being suppressed. It's crazy. There's a lot of negativity going on. There's still a lot of positives in the space. You know, a lot of adoption happening. It's just it's crazy that we are where we are today when it comes to crypto and digital assets. You know, the mainstream media, you know, obviously countries adopting uh, digital assets is absolutely massive. I mean, the, the sentiment back in 2017, 2018 was very different than it is now. So there's a lot of positives. But there's still a lot of negatives, too. We just got to do our best to stay strong and be safe.